Welcome to September's LeetCode Challenge. Today's problem is distinct subsequences. Given two strings, S and T, return the number of distinct subsequences of S which equal T. A string subsequence is a new string formed from the original string by deleting some, can be none, of the characters without disturbing the remaining characters' relative positions. ACE is a subsequence of ABCDE, while AEC is not. Say we're given a source string of rabbit with three Bs, we're going to have three ways of forming target, three subsequences rather. We'll have ones using the four, four letters, and then the IT here, as well as one using the two letters that come at the end, as well as the two letters and skipping that, that middle B as well. So we already kind of know intuitively that we probably want to do this recursively, and if we can do it recursively, there's probably a dynamic programming solution. So let's start with the recursive solution. What we're going to do is pass in the i and j, which is going to give us the index numbers of s and, s and t. And we want to see if we could get to the end of j, or the target string, right? So what I'm going to do here is first write mnn, equaling the length of source and length of target. And let's write a recursive function. Uh, we'll call it recursive, and we're going to pass in the i and j, which is going to represent the source and the target index number. So at this point, we find that j is greater or equal to n. That means we've hit our target, right? So we can turn to 1. Uh, it, otherwise, if we hit our i, if we say that i is greater or equal to m, we're going to return a 0 here. So what I'm going to do is first iterate down uh, recursively uh, by increasing our, our i, and what I'll what I mean by that is let's recursively call i plus 1, but we'll keep that j to be the same. So whatever returns here, uh, that's going to be the count at some point. We should return a 0 at, uh, when we start at the very beginning, right? And then what we'll do is say if s of i is equal to t of j, then we want to increase both pointers, i and j, right? So we'll say count plus equal recursively i plus 1 as well as j plus 1. And at the very end, we should just return our count. And that means all we have to do then is return our recursive and just pass in 0, 0. And I'm pretty sure I have to do our LRU cache here as well. OK, so this would be our recursive approach. Let's see if this works. And it does look like it's working. So let's submit that. And there we go, accepted. So this would be what? m times n time complexity, I believe, because we are caching. Uh, but it's kind of hard to read. It's a little bit unintuitive. So let's see what we can do dynamically, uh, do a dynamic program solution as well here. Um, so just say that we had a very simple example. Say that we had a target of AB and a source string of ABB. Now, we already can tell from here that this is going to be an answer of 2, right? We can form AB or A second B, AB, so that would be 2. But how could we do this bottom up? How could we build this up? Well, we would need a DP array first considering a blank string for both. Say that we had a blank string for the target. Well, there's only going to be one way to form that. Regardless of how many strings or characters we have in our source string, if our target's blank, there's only one way to do that always, right? So this would all be 1 here. Now, if our source is blank and we have some characters in our target, these would all be 0, right? So the first row is going to be all zeros. So those are our base cases. Now, we want to build up somehow. What's the thing that we need to consider? We need to consider, uh, well, there's two things. The first thing is, how many were we able to form for this target with characters that came before? So here with blank string from our source, we had zero ways of forming A, right? So we're going to bring that over. Um, and if we did have a way, we want to bring that over because we're actually adding an extra character here in our source, right? And when we find that, yes, our source target, uh, our source character is equal to our target character at this point, we're going to bring over however many times we're able to form it right before both of these. So this would be the uh, I minus one and J minus one. So we want to add this right here. So here we're going to bring that over. This would be one. Here at uh, AB, a, we first want to take the one right above, which would be 0. 
but these don't equal one another, so that remains the same. The same thing here, we want to bring over that one down, uh, but A and B don't equal one another, so there's nothing to do here. Same with here, we bring over zero, but we do see, yes, B and B equal one another, so we want to take, what about at this point, when it was just A and A, we did have one match there, right? So we're going to bring that over here, one. So at this point, right now, we were able to form AB using these two string, th these two characters in our string once. Now, same thing here, let's bring over one down, but they don't equal one another, so we don't care. And here, we're going to bring over one down because we're adding an extra B here, but we were able to form our target at least once. But B and B equal one another, right? So let's add whatever we had here down here. So this would be two. So that would be it. We can form AB using ABB two times. And this would work all the way down however many uh, characters we have here. So, okay, that should be a little bit easier to understand. Let's calculate this being the length of uh, source and this would be length of target. Let's create our DP array. And we're gonna have all zeros at first and we'll say uh, times n plus 1 for blank and range of m plus 1. Now, the first thing we want to do is that first column, let's make mark them all as 1s. So we'll say 4i in range of um, m dp of i0. These will all equal 1. So these, this is like if the target string was just blank. Okay, now for i in range of starting from 1 to m plus 1. Yeah, I forgot to add a plus 1 here. It's my fault. And for j in range of 1 to n plus 1, this is for the target string. What do we want to do? Okay, so first thing we want to do is take our... Add to this whatever was right, bef right above, right? before we were able to add this extra character from our target string, let's add, I'm sorry, from our source string, we'll say i minus one, j. And it's only when these characters are equal to one another, if s of i is equal to g, t of j. But notice that I'm gonna have to subtract one here because I added an extra column for these two indexes, right? So if this is the case, if these characters right now are equal to one another, then we are going to also add to j whatever came right above and left. So i minus 1, j minus 1. Okay, so finally return the dp i minus 1, i minus 1. And that should also work. And there we go. So this is also an m times n time complexity, but my opinion, it's a little bit easier to understand. Uh, it's very hard to come up with, though. <laughs> These are hard questions. All right, thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.